You know, one thing I noticed lately uh, in hearing a soloist with organ accompaniment that I could actually tell that there was an organ playing and a voice and differenti differentiate between the two of them. It wasn't good music, but still I could tell that there were two different components to that music. We've had a lot of fun lately in a sense of playing sort of word games with this where I don't even lip read at all, but just listen to the words. It's much more successful than it's been before that way. Yeah, I get tired of lip reading. You talk behind my back and see what happens. Okay. Yeah. Let's try it. Do you want to tell me what to talk about? Or Just say some of those simple words to get me started. Okay. Baby. Say it again. Baby. Baby. Am I right? Yes. Okay. Sailboat. Sailboat. Earthquake. Earthquake. Cowboy. Pardon? Cowboy. Let's say it again. Cowboy. I'm not sure of that one. Cowboy. Okay, cowboy. Airplane. Pardon? Airplane. Airplane. <laughs> Been too long since I've done these. What's that? Airplane. Okay, airplane. Tell me a president's name, his first and last name. William McKinley. William McKinley. Tell me another one. Um, Ulysses Grant. Say that again. Ulysses Grant. Oh, Ulysses says Grant. That's a hard one. Grover Cleveland. Grover Cleveland. John Kennedy. John Kennedy? Yes. Okay. Abraham Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln. John Quincy Adams. John Quincy Adams. George Washington. George Washington. What do you do? Give me a history test? Or something? Yes. Okay. Hey, tell me some cities and states in the United States. Okay. okay. Miami, Florida. Miami, Florida. St. Louis, Missouri. St. Louis, Missouri. Boy, we must have this adjusted well. It's working pretty well. Las Vegas, Nevada. Las Vegas. Seattle, Washington. Seattle. Detroit, Michigan. Detroit? Yes. Okay. New York, New York. New York. Boston, Massachusetts. Boston. Um. Can you think of any more? I'm running out of cities. Um, what? Okay. Sacramento, California. Sacramento. Salem, Oregon. Salem. Butte, Montana. Butte, Montana? Yes. Okay. Albuquerque, New Mexico. Albuquerque. Austin, Texas. Was it Austin? Yes. Okay. Louisville, Kentucky. Where? Louisville, Kentucky. Say it again. Louisville, Kentucky. What's in? Louisville, oh, Kentucky. Louisville, I see. Yeah, just give me some random statements now and see if I can get in. It's time to eat supper. Pardon? It's time to eat supper. I'm not sure, yeah. It's time to eat supper. I understand. I said it's time to eat supper. Oh, I thought you said I was afraid to say it. <laughs> baby, it's cold outside. I remember that. Baby, it's cold outside. <laughs> the sailboat sailed the seven seas. The sailboat sailed the seven seas. That's easy <laughs> because of the sailboat I've practiced up in. I can't think of anything to say right now. Why not? I have run out of things to say. Let me see if I can think of a good question for you then. Can you uh, put some of the words that I've tried to learn in sentences? You know, baby, sailboat, guys. Right? The earthquake... Ruined the city. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, that was working pretty well right then. I must have it adjusted pretty well. Very good. Music has made a big difference, hasn't it? You've been able to appreciate music a lot more. Do you understand the words, or did you, do you just get the pitch and the song? Well, there's a little bit of pitch, there's a little bit of word clue, there's a little bit of tempo. You finally put enough clues together, and you hope you're pretty close to knowing what's going on. 
You know, that's funny. That's one of the differences between this system and lip reading. It used to be I'd like shorter words, I think, and shorter sentences because, I don't know, I didn't want too intensive a clue, but now longer words have more clues and I don't get lost in them. And if a person continues to talk, that there are just more clues coming through, and it helps you put everything together much better. Okay. Boy, it sure makes a difference. Like last week when that committee was visiting our library and evaluating the work that I do, and having people talk to me and be able to understand most of their questions and all, then really communicate with them. It makes you pretty self-conscious when people are trying to get through to you, and you don't get it at all. But this is much different. Hey, I'm really lucky now. So many people are growing mustaches, and I felt like carrying around scissors to cut everybody's mustache shorter so I could see their lips. But I get enough help now that I can still get through to those people. Now, you know, I phoned you this afternoon. That was really an experience because, you know, I thought you were answering, and then all of a sudden I realized that it wasn't your voice. And then, you know, I asked who it was, and I wasn't getting the name I expected. And then finally I realized that it was your mother. Uh, then it's completely different. Can you tell it's me, though, when, when I do answer? Well, I'm not sure whether it's the tone of voice or whether it just doesn't seem quite right, you know. But I felt like asking, you know, is this really the home that I'm trying to phone just in case for someone completely different? Can you tune a car now better than you could before by listening to it? Well, I think I could be starting someone's car without a tachometer like I like to use, and at least I wouldn't rev it up and ruin their engine by overspeeding it because I would hear it before. If I didn't feel the vibrations, I, there'd be no telling what I could do. Remember last summer when uh, I was sitting reading at that table up in the mountains and I had a sack of peanuts over to my side and all of a sudden I reached over there and scared a squirrel that was in there, but I'd heard him rattle his sack. Yeah, they That's, were all around. And that, you, you also heard the blue jays. You could tell the blue jays were up in the trees. Well, I even picked up blue jays again a couple of weeks later in a different place and realized immediately that it was a blue jay squawking. Yeah. Hey, you know, another thing that really pays off to me, you know, I ride my bicycle to work and I'm going down the street. People used to look at me funny when I'd pass them, like there's some funny noise, I thought. And finally, I realize now that my chain is not right when I'm shifting gears, but now I can hear whether that's silent or whether I've got the chain in between gears and rattling funny. It'd be a lot better for my bicycle, probably. It really makes quite a noise when you're not in gear. Boy, it sure makes a difference be able to hear a car come up behind you instead of just all of a sudden having a big car beside you or something. You know, one day a big truck came up behind me and I was about ready to run for the curb and get out of the way. I didn't know what was happening, but the truck was going just a little bit faster than me, so it took a while before it got by. So you're picking up a lot more sound when you're riding the bicycle. The sounds around yeah, that's you. That's a long ways from nothing. That's, uh, yeah. That makes it a lot safer when you're riding your bicycle for you. Yeah. That's not the only thing It's safe. You know, being at school now and being able to hear a fire alarm, for instance, well, people used to have to come and find me and say it's time to get out of the building. And now as soon as that starts ringing, I'm aware yeah, of it. I'm glad. <laughs> yeah, it's nice. Of course, it's also nice to hear the bells ring at the beginning and ending of a period. I'll be glad as they keep working on this to get better. I especially want to get rid of this thing when they get that under the skin. So it'll be there and I won't have the wires on. A little bit more development and the fidelity picks up will make a lot of difference. Yeah. I was a meeting the other day, and I sat for an hour and a half and listened to a speaker, but Fidelity wasn't good enough to hear it. Maybe next year I'll get those words and understand. I didn't enjoy that speaker either, so that was all right. <laughs> the final step in the development of the cochlear implant is to develop a unit which is entirely implanted under the skin. Whenever we have anything coming out through the skin, it's an unstable situation from the standpoint of possible rejection. Therefore, a coil has been developed which will be used as an induction coil. By putting a similar coil to this outside the skin, we will be able to implant this unit under the skin and induce currents in it. This is the active electrode, and because we are putting the same information into each one of the electrode wires in the opposite ear, 
we will simply have areas where we have taken off the insulation of this wire, and in this way, the same information will go in to different areas along the wire. The opposite wire is the ground wire. About three months before making this film, a, a unit of this type was implanted in Mr. Grazer's opposite ear. And I can just palpate this implanted induction coil. This unit functioned quite well for a period of about six weeks. And during this time, we were able to find out that by putting a coil over the outside and then having him wear a headband, that he would hear the same type of sound through this unit as he was hearing in the opposite ear. Unfortunately, however, because of muscle movement, the wires fractured. We were able to see these breaks in the wire by x-ray, and this unit is no longer functioning. We're certain that it will function, that these fractures in the wire are a minor setback, and by redesigning the unit and putting the wire in areas where there is no movement, we'll be able to overcome this problem. This then represents the stage that we're now in, a stage where we have standardized on an electrode system. We have developed a completely implanted electrode system, which we feel will be permanently stable. We feel that we are now ready for widespread clinical trial. Now, obviously, we don't mean that just anyone will put these in on patients, but that we will develop groups of engineers, otologists, rehabilitation experts all over the world who will continue to research this unit and develop it to a stage where it is applicable to those who have severe sensory deafness. Now, we feel that there is urgency about this development that we all must get behind this at this time in order to develop the best possible system because for some time there will be questions as to what is the best electrode system. There will be questions about what type of circuits should we use to give the most intelligibility. Once these questions have been thoroughly researched and we develop a stage of expertise and of accomplishment with this unit that is practical, and obviously it is practical now, we hope to make it better, then I think we will be in a position to help those who are severely hard of hearing in a way which has never before been possible. Just what can you really hear? When announcements are made over a PA system, you'll hear them but not quite understand them. You can hear the teapot whistle. You can hear a typewriter, and even in the next room, and you know exactly what it is. You can hear a fire crackle and pop. You can hear bacon sizzle. You're annoyed by squeaky doors, and finally you get around to oiling them. Bathroom fixtures are very noisy with running water. You hear water run in the sink. That's sometimes almost too noisy. You can hear the rain drum on the roof of your car. Then you can hear a squeak or rattle in your car and practically drive you crazy. You can meet someone in the street and hear them when they greet you, although you probably won't know whether they're saying hello or morning. You can hear the glass break when the baseball flies through the window. I can tell which of my two sons has the lowest voice, and it's actually the youngest son that has the lowest voice. Someone whistling will annoy you, or maybe when you get used to it, that you just automatically realize it's just someone whistling. You can hear the cork pop when you open your champagne. You can't hear whispered sweet nothings. <laughs>